Application, Data, and Host Security, Chapter 5. In this area, we could consider this whole topic area, applications, data, and host, to be a bottomless pit. But of all the domains, knowledge areas, you have to know for the Security Plus, to an organization, this is probably the most important area of all. This is their heartbeat. This is the computing services that support the business mission or the government agency mission of the organization. Within application, data, and host security, you need to be familiar with explaining the importance of application security. You need to be able to carry out appropriate procedures to establish host security, and also be intimately familiar with the importance of data security. So we have a very diversified agenda in this particular topical area. First, we're gonna start with web application security. We wanna talk about the fundamentals of how a web application is designed, how it's hardened, and how it should be tested. And then we move to host security, and host security is typically associated with the operating system, such as Windows, Unix, on the mainframes, the Xeos operating system. So we want to take a look at how we harden the security of a server. We also want to look at one of the hottest technologies in today's IT world, which is virtualization. We want to look at hardware security and mobile device security, and this is where we find that there are other things we have to do to apply the concepts we've already learned in earlier chapters in this course. And then we move to data security, and the number one security issue in today's world, and I think this is acknowledged by most security and even lay professionals, is data loss prevention. Data loss or data leakage is a major issue, and maybe it's a bigger issue in your own organization than you realize until some problem arises and you discover that how did all that data get in some other hands? Also, we want to take a look at the deployment of software and hardware encryption. We talked a lot about different algorithms and encryption technologies in Chapter 3 of the course. We talked about AES and RSA and so on and so forth. We want to see how we actually apply these in different types of application scenarios, many of them in the mobile arena. And then we'll wrap up the chapter with a review of the high points and then direct you to take some more practice questions. Application security. It's a major layer of defense that provides protection for the applications that run on your host that are the heart of your business. This is the livelihood of your business. So if these applications are corrupted, they're made unavailable, their data, it falls in the wrong hands, you can encounter serious consequences. And when we talk about applications, we have both internal and internet facing, such as the big deal.harry.com out in the internet is out there in harm's way, but it's a great way to make a lot of money, as Harry will verify for you. Internet web applications are out there with bullseyes on their chest. These are the most common types of servers that come under attack. As we speak, as you listen to this video, there are hundreds and thousands of servers that are constantly under attack by unauthorized users. So when you're out there deploying web applications, you need to exercise extreme care because of the public nature of those internet-facing applications. The hackers are out there ready to clean your clock. So let's start with understanding how the web dialogue works. So if we're looking at the bigdeal.harry.com, which on slide five is depicted on the right-hand side of the chart, we see the web applications that are presented to users through what's called a web server. And the dialogue between the browser, which would be the user client system, and the application server is a request and response process. Some of the common request commands might be gets or puts with the URL. The uniform resource locator is the main architecture of the dialogue between client browsers and web application servers. And also, as part of this dialogue, you also have what are called completion codes. If you look at the center of slide five, you'll see HTTP forward slash 1.0, and then you see a 200 OK. That means that the GET request at the upper middle of the screen was accepted by the web server and they're responding, usually delivering some type of data, 
Because a get means get me some data. A put is to send some data up to the server. And that's further explained on this next slide where we have the request response, the web browser is the client, they're issuing HTTP requests back and forth, and the web server is trying to service those. 